How to make EastEnders more realistic? A Reddit thread that asks, to make EastEnders more realistic, what storylines would you have to represent real life? Um, for original poster says, Ian forgot to declare his tax return, so he owes the government a whole lot of money. God, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's too real for me. I don't want any of that. Ben starts getting more hearing issues again because it doesn't go away just like that. Callum has a PTSD relapse from being in the army and needs to be put on meds and gets him a service dog named Monty. Not sure why he's called Monty, but sure. Uh, Kat actually gets some decent counselling. Uh, CBT for all the abuse and horrible situations she's been in. Other than a few oh, low points, awesome. it's not been shown how truly traumatic it likely is for her. I'd love to see her be around to lay into Tony with Whitney's storyline. Phil goes into a low mood she's losing Cat and the boys, but instead of drinking, he barely leaves the house and won't talk to anyone. That's interesting. And here are some, some ideas that are non-character specific, but they may be a little more real to make it feel like closer to life. Obviously, there needs to be some drama, but these kinds of storylines shoved in may help. Someone loses a pet and can't find them, so they set them missing posters. Yeah, we, we've done that before. Like They, they did that with uh, Bailey's dog that they found. But it turned out it was like Bernie's like girlfriend's dog or something. Um, someone gets mugged but not beaten. They just get their stuff stolen and have to report to the police like you do in real life. Never been mugged before personally. Um, that didn't happen to Mizzoud. He didn't get beaten up. The police install new CCTV cameras across Wolford and perhaps Ravi and Ben worry about their deeds being found out. Um... Nish hasn't completed his food safety level 3 certificate, so he's in trouble running the calf. Lovely. It's just, just hygiene wardens all, all everywhere. Ah, oh, there's, there's rats in this fucking kitchen. Um, the people of Walford discover Addy, uh, Aldi and Lidl abandon the cafe, the Vic and Stacey's Baps, and all three go out of business in favour of families eating and drinking at home for half the price. <laughs> uh. I mean, I mean, the, the, I mean, let, 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 let's look at this, right? Let's no, hold on. Let's just dive into this for a sec. The, the fucking, fucking, the cafe is very cheap for like what? It, it is. London. It is. It is cheap for London like, in twenty twenty three. I've been in Wembley, which is in London, and fuck me, it's expensive. I understand it's Wembley, but fuck me. Even though I did get a lovely, I did get a lovely fucking sandwich out of this lovely little shop and a big little chocolate pie. Oh, it was delicious. Five quid. It cost me about seven quid. Oh, fuck me, actually. It was, oh, it was delicious. But enough about that. I just wanted to bring that off because, oh, Jesus. Oh, it was delicious. Yeah, I, just, I can't stop saying it's delicious because it fucking was delicious. <laughs> it fucking was. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the prices are so cheap in the cafe. I, I was just, I was I was just waiting for you to get so caught up thinking about the chocolate pie that you forgot your point, which I feel like nearly happened. You were just like, oh, that fucking pie. Oh yeah, cafe, I, no, cheap. I, like, <laughs> like, 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 like I swear to God, it was a lovely place in Wembley. Fucking, the, it was like a bakery or something and they had like homemade sandwiches and shit. Oh Jesus, Ash. I need to bring you there when we go to Wembley. Oh, it's the, Maybe not stay for her. Fuck them. Me and you will go there. Someone says, someone buys a washing machine and stop using the laundrette. Nah. Oh, yeah. I found my... Um, I actually found a scene. I forget where it takes place. I, no, no. It takes place in the laundrette. But I forget what time it takes place in, if that makes sense. And it's basically... To prove my point, it's, it's this very emotional scene between these two characters. I forgot what they're talking about, but I, I, I vividly remember it. I am like they're talking about something, but in the background I hear. Yeah. And it's like this very emotional scene, and it's like this is why you can't have a wash machine on set because they'd be like, "I fucking, I fucking love you, Denise. I love you." Yeah, fucking in the background, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, someone says a loneliness storyline for Phil would be very realistic and potentially painful to watch. I do think it would be pretty cool. I just, you know, I want Phil to deal with things in not very Phil ways, you know. Like, maybe, like, just, just 
starts throwing himself into like this project and he's just struggling but he's like just trying to do it like it would be really interesting to see like like a genuine depression storyline for phil because it it feels like he uh, as a character who's so toxically masculine like i feel like just the the isolation would be pretty fucking wild i I feel like a a depression storyline in general is probably quite important to have and now you've seen bits. There was there was a story on Hollyoaks uh, this previous year. Uh, there was a couple of them in general, but I feel like I don't know. Like the mental health storylines, they do happen, but it's definitely it's not always the ones. They're not always the ones you remember, like Kim's PTSD. Um, like you know, you you could definitely do a bit more with them personally, especially at the point we're in. I think it would have been really interesting to see, like, a depression storyline during COVID as well, due to, you know, someone who fucking lo- loves to go out and have a good time, but they're suddenly trapped indoors the whole time, and, you Ash know. Me, a little bit. We're going to go down a rabbit hole where people are going to go, it was a conspiracy set up by the government, be careful now. Um, um, but, but, but uh, like, surely COVID couldn't exist in the East End as well. Like, surely Phil would go out there with a baseball bat and try and it did. it up. It did. I suppose that, to be fair, you did have Amy's mental health stuff, which I kind of glazed over and I did think was really good. Um, But, yeah, it's just... I don't know. I, I want, like, a... I don't... I don't want it to be this, but I still think that there needs to be more stories told. You still need to tell a story about, like, a, like, like, like a, a, a man over the age of 40 suffering with depression. Because it's still that stat where it's still like the the biggest killer of men over forty is suicide. Like it's still it's you need to tell this story somehow. And I just don't think they I, they've just not done it. Done it in Hollyoaks. Done it in Corey. I don't think it's been done in EastEnders, but I think it'd be a really poignant storyline to tell. And I'd rather that than the fucking cancer storyline that Alfie has. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's like you take someone who seems like a very confident, very loud, very open, and then fucking see where it goes. Um, just just my take. Maybe I'm mental, but um, so I think it would really show how Phil is just like everyone else, not this big bad guy. This him being lo- like lonely. He just developed unhealthy masking techniques and not this and decided to make great choices. Yeah, I'd find it really strange. Cat's not any counseling. She went through a lot of trauma. So I love Cat and Phil together because they're both a bad past. Both had parents that were emotionally distant, hard on them. Both made some quite big mistakes in their lives, but both have deep down big hearts. Sure, Phil has a lot more negative traits to get rid of, but they both helped each other grow as people. That's fair. It's a good good observation. I I'm, I'm pretty sure that I don't know if there was a topic talking about storylines we'd like to see. I'm pretty sure there was, but I it was a bit more like fucking like medical, like someone like show me this condition. But there's two, there's two sto- there's another story in the line I'd like to see. And I would still like to see... I would still like to see a, a proper trans storyline. I know Hollyoaks is currently tackling a trans storyline where they're going to seemingly go through the transition of a, of a, of a character um, over time, uh, which is fucking cool, and I'm really happy that a show is doing it fully. But I really would love to see a, someone transition before and after storyline. Uh, I don't know how you do it, like, thematically. I don't know how you would. Uh, but I think it'd be a really poignant story to tell. I don't know why, but my mind just instantly went, like, they go for the surgery, they have short hair. They have short hair and nine soaps. So he goes in, he has short hair, then they come out as a female with fucking long flowing hair. Fucking things like that. And it's like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've changed instantly. What the fuck? You went like, in and got. You, you went in and just. You, you got a poop job. You, you didn't fucking like. What the fuck? You didn't go on a time machine. Like, what the fuck? You just. You went, what? Like, yeah, like, I, 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 that's why I'd want it to be like a. Like a fairly long running story where you slowly see someone transition and change. Um, isn't isn't the, the Ross trans Slater wasn't there? Yeah, it was a uh, it, it was a guy called Kyle Slater, but I I I I don't know. I think they were just like you're not 
who are you? It's like, I'm Kyle. And it's like, we don't know who the fuck you are. And then they kind of go through it. Um, and like I said, what, what, what are the storylines would I necessarily want to see? I still, I still want to see some coverage of the domestic violence towards men. I still think that's a storyline that should be explored a bit more. Not to say that it's like, fuck it, I'm, I don't know the stats, you know, who know, I don't know, like, any of the actual stats surrounding domestic violence and, you know, whether it's as high in, like, men on women or women on men or women on women, etc., etc. But, you know, point being, it'd still be a, a, an interesting story to tell, as usually when they do have the domestic story, the abuse storylines, it is usually just a man on a woman. Um, I think it'd be a, a pretty interesting storyline to have. Uh, do you have any storylines you'd actively just want to see portrayed? I, uh, I'd love a fucking, uh, I'd love a killer who's not a killer. I don't know why, I just love that. Like a comedy serial killer who's not a killer. Like he just accidentally kills people. He just accidentally in the most weirdest ways. Like, like let's say they're, let's just say someone's on top of a ladder. They're cleaning windows and he has to hold the ladder. But let's say he's bursting for a piss. He's dead. He's been holding this bad boy in for four hours. He's desperately holding this piss in. He's been holding it in for hours. So say, like, all right, Dave, I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going for a fucking quick piss. And then Dave falls 20 feet off the ladder, or however high, and, and falls and lands on the bricks or something. Yeah. And just kills him and just dies. And then he, he's not a serial killer, but he, does he, like, he kills keep, him. By does he like, keep there. getting away with it? He keeps getting away with it until he kills a police officer by accident. <laughs> and then the police arrest him. That would be funny. And go, wait, wait, hold on here. This makes fuck. sense. It would be so... I don't know. There probably is a horror film like that in real life. In, in fucking... In, in our world. Reese. I, I don't know what... Is there? No, no. I was just saying, like, imagine if it was Reese. <laughs> he kills everyone with the tuba. Is it hmm. the tuba he plays? Yes. You're fucking... Fucking just... Oh, boom, 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 boom. Boom, oh, bollocks are here again. Um, I'd love to see a return of Bad Boy Alfie. Uh, uh, you know, you brought it in in 2018, you wrecked content in 2022. You know, 2024, he has cancer, you know. Cancer changes people. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. I mean, someone so, also also chimes in with an idea of just having, like, like a, a struggling, like, single dad storyline. Yeah. Um, Where... Yeah. You know, if Ben leaves or if Callum leaves, maybe Jay then has to fucking, like, raise Lexi by himself and, you know, like, yeah, just have the things where he has to learn all the things, like, he has to learn how to, like, like braid a hair or tie up a hair or some stuff, like, you know, all the things that traditionally, like, like the mum would do, but obviously he has to try and manage by himself. Even just have people, like, not treat him as, like, as valid. It's like, oh, you know. Like, I think it'd be an interesting. Uh, I think it'd be an interesting story to tell. Like you know, some people maybe, maybe it's always that kind of thing where you you hear stories about how at like a playground where it's just like a just like a dad with his child, and like some people just assume that he's just some fucking weirdo, like perv, and just like no 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 that's, that's my daughter like fucking, it's not a weird thing. I'm just I'm taking my daughter out just like you fucking are. For fuck's sake. Um, someone says just, just people set, setting down for a night in front of the telly. I wouldn't mind it, honestly. It'd be hard to, like, do. But it w would be funny to just see, like, you know, oh, w uh, just, oh, what, what's everybody doing right now? And it's like, it's like Elaine and Linda, like, fucking singing as they're watching, like, The Masked Singer or something. Like, oh, that's, that's clearly Louis Walsh. I don't know, since, I don't know some shit like that. I don't know why, but I just when you brought that up, I'm just mind of the fucking of Terry putting on top gear to Bianca. <laughs> He's just putting on top gear. He's like, yeah, baby, I'm just... gonna show you the roughest night of your life. Welcome back to Top Gear. The uh, some... the... uh, the Cybertruck someone... is not real. The 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 uh, Cybertruck is rusty. Uh, someone says, like, see someone swear. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Imagine, ima imagine that they got post watershed, right? Because it yeah. can happen on UK TV, but it can't happen in US TV. 
And it's like, okay, you can say one swear word. We're not going to script it. We're not going to script it. And then they just they, they just go, cut. Hmm. Like, and it's like, oh, shit, he said it. He said the word. He said the word. He said it. Censor it, lads. Censor it. It's still one thing I want to see in American professional wrestling. I want to see someone hit the C word. Like, I'm, like, like, I understand, like, you bitch and everything, but if someone hit you with that, that fucking C word in the promo. Oh, yeah. Or, or, it's be a, or be a in a fight. It's a fairly big deal. It's like, it's like if you drop the N word just randomly in a conversation against someone. You know, holy... Look, 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 we were just fighting over spaghetti. What the fuck are you doing? You're dropping <laughs> hard bombs here, motherfucker. Yes, um, but carrying on with that. Uh, someone says, someone gets addicted to video games. That is, I mean, interesting nonetheless. I'll take it. Uh, I, I don't know how you do it, but someone gets a, someone gets a porn addiction. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, someone also says this too. Autism storyline. Now, Ollie is autism, but, and Freddy is ADHD, which is like, okay, still interesting. But the main issue of both of those stories is Freddy, oh, I said Bobby, oh, it's Bobby Brazier, Freddy Slater. Freddy fucking, Freddy had signs of being, of like having ADHD. And then he suddenly got bumped up to private and got diagnosed in like two months. Uh, same thing happened with Ollie, where it's like, ah, oh, Ollie might have autism, and it's like, ah, oh, and then Mick's like, ah, oh, fuck it, we'll just stump up the money and get it, get him diagnosed now. But I still think, as someone who went through a long process of getting a diagnosis, I was quite lucky in how fucking, like, quickly in comparison to a lot of other people's stories. But I think it would be a, uh, uh, an interesting, and not even like, not, I mean, yeah, sure, you could tell it w with with a kid or you could tell it as someone who's like kind of grown up their whole life thinking that they are like a well normal i guess thinking they are a, a, a neurotypical i believe uh is there's a fucking term like someone who believes that but then slowly through time they start to realize like some of the behaviors maybe are more fucking have more in common with autism than not or you could do it with a storyline with autism in women because it's a, it's a thing where it's not diagnosed nearly as often. It's often kind of... It's not discouraged as such, but it's kind of like if we're having to fucking go for a diagnosis, it's usually more effort if you're a woman than if you're a man. Um, And you could do a story of... You, you you could even like parallel it where you have a where you have a, a girl with autism and a guy with autism and obviously the guy gets a bit more like fuck the 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 girl gets unfairly treated and not taken as seriously because you know like it it does happen and it's a it's a fucking crying shame. Uh, but also just have it take a long period of time. Um, and I also don't think like. Uh, unless they start having fucking Ollie when he actually, like, starts to speak. Which he seemingly had no issues with because they didn't fucking care to make it a problem, you know. Like, struggling to learn how to how to talk, how to care for themselves, you know. He's still talking now, he's fine. <laughs> um. Doo -doo -doo. Uh. But, you know, have him, just have it be a long-running story. Have it be a... You know, don't have the character appear as, like, normal as such. Because, you know, but you could tell a really interesting story of seeing how this character grows and starts to learn and, you know, see how far they can go. But, yeah. No, definitely not, not, not a bias there. <laughs> um... Someone says, someone to dabble in recreational drugs now and then without getting addicted, turning to sex work, or suffering any dire consequences. Yes, yeah, just someone just dropping some fucking, dropping some Mandy. Someone um, doing mushrooms in a bar. I mean, hey, I mean, I hey mush, mushrooms, mushrooms, uh, should, uh, I, hey, um, never tried mushrooms, but. There's a lot of like stuff to to suggest that actually doing mushrooms, hypothetically speaking, like that that there's like a certain like chemical in it that kind of I don't know it just it's helped a lot of people get through a lot of like dark shit, 
you know it's helped people get a bit more grounded feel a bit more like like together like feel a bit more one with nature type deal like i Matt, I'd, uh, but like that i'm pretty sure it's a like, 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 cyalis or something something like that there's a genuine like chemical in it uh mush I, mushroom drug uh i would love i would love if someone trip mushrooms in a graveyard in east Enders, but they see all the dead bodies of the past so they see like nick they see Dan, they see Pat, they see Peggy. I didn't. I just want to see that. Do it on a Halloween. But like, there have been genuine studies to test that to kind of suggest that shrooms will actually kind of, you know, help deal with kind of like depression, anxieties, like treatment for depression. You know, like it'd be interesting to see. Uh, I I st- I want someone who just smokes weed on the show because. Come on, most people do it. Come on. Uh, but you know, weed. What weed's weirdly taboo for some reason, and it just shouldn't be. Um, like that's a fucking name. Uh, did it do? <laughs> Let's see what else is going here. Someone says that Ian gets punched a lot. Sound? No, no, no. I disagree. Yeah, me too. Um. Yeah, just sort, of just some form of drug use. Uh, and just a lot of stuff. I do feel like. I mean, obviously, I st- I I love soaps because it is like real life, but obviously turned up to like nine. So obviously, you get to avoid most of the boring shit. Uh, but it would be interesting to see some of these things taking place. It did instead of actually it being what how to make sense of represent real life. It did just kind of go into what storylines we'd like to see as well. Uh, but you know what? Just work from what you got. Tell us what you think in the comment section down below. We have been watching Wolford. We thank you for watching the video. And the one way you can thank us back is by liking the video, commenting, and subscribing on the Watching Wolford channel. We appreciate you. Uh, there's all links in the description for a Discord, Patreon, YouTube memberships, coffee. Uh, and our wrestling channel, one more match, 182, if you want to go ahead and support the more stuff we do, but as normal, thank you for watching this video, make sure to join us in the next one, see you next time, bye bye!